Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 22, my team career mode. This is episode number 30 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 2. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was a truly biblical episode. It may have been the best race that we have had as a team yet, so if you haven't seen it, please check it out, because in a moment, I am going to spoil it for you because it was a really epic race all the way down to literally the last lap of the Grand Prix as we entered that last lap Alexander Albon went for a double overtake move he made it three wide into turn one and overtook Perez and Ricardo to get the race win and then what continued on then past turn one Ricardo and Perez coming to blows making contact with each other the tyres going off. It was a perfect storm and we somehow amazingly overtook both of them in the span of just a couple of corners and two straight to get the second place. It was a real whirlwind of a race at the end of that one and now we head into the Canadian Grand Prix, one of my favourite circuits on the calendar. So, with the momentum of the team getting its first win, its first one-two, can we now step into the spotlight and look to try and aim to get our first win of the season at what would be such a fitting place? It would be such amazing timing and working out if we could try and get our first win at Canada, uh, because for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know how much I have a soft spot for Montreal in my heart, but Podium celebrations in order in the activity timeline and then also some more second driver performance reviews to boost the focus even further of Albon. But going into this episode then, also you may have noticed yourselves if you booted up F122 today, a brand new patch has come in, 1.08 and this finally finally will fix the AI straight line speed OP and will balance the AI better. So you should, all of us, should be able to bump up the difficulty a bit more and should notice that lack of insane acceleration off slower corners, especially from the AI. So coupled with the fact we're going to one of my fastest circuits, favorite circuits, the momentum we've got as a team anyway of being the best car on the grid and this brand new patch I think it's a perfect storm that we could be on to be fighting for our first win today. Mentioning though we have the fastest car on the grid, we have to try and stay and keep it that way as we continue to purchase more upgrades. A really hefty purchase there of the weight redistribution pretty much uh, completely takes all of our R&D points there of 1,700, but it's going to be worth it because I think, I, I think from the feeling I was talking about to you guys about the car feeling very stiff, a bit odd mid-corner and just the weight balance, I'm hoping as we continue to do more weight reduce. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping as we continue to do. I'm hoping as we continue to do more weight redistribution upgrades that that is something that may help that because we do have a fair amount of, of those upgrades to go on the My Team car. So maybe that's the reason why is because there's so much to improve on in that area of how the weight balance is and where the ballast is on the car. Well, at least I hope so because, yeah, even though, you know, we had a great race around Baku, in terms of the feeling for every single one of those laps around Azerbaijan, it was a very weird feeling F1 car, I must say. Um, and going into Canada, well, you may have noticed I spread out the uploads recently over the last week because I've been out on holiday. So this is the first time playing the game in about a week. So it's going to feel very strange hopping back onto the game fresh away from not doing many laps for about a week. And then we've got, uh, obviously, the new AI to deal with. So I don't really know where we're going to stand. I guess we're going to find that out. But heading into Montreal, you can clearly see as we zoom in on this R&D chart, we actually do still step up even more to be the best car on the grid as we get further away from Red Bull. Mercedes and Ferrari catch back up to McLaren as Mercedes now are the third best car on the grid ahead of Ferrari and McLaren. And then you can see Williams and Aston Martin continue to improve and gain on Alpha Tauri. So again, it's going to be a very feisty competitive grid. That fight between McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes should be very juicy. But to be honest, ourselves and Red Bull, we're involved in that because the fuel spread's so tiny that, you know, the AI, you know, what us individual drivers are making a big, big difference, as we saw in Azerbaijan, of course, as we were fighting 
for the race wins with with a Red Bull, with a McLaren. So we've headed on into Q1 then around Montreal. It's an okay first lap. We went out again on the same set of tyres in order to save a set for Q2 and Q3 ultimately. So this is, uh, well, actually I'm quite quite glad we actually still gained some time, even though this, uh, this set of tyres now is about five, six laps old. Across the line getting three tens, so that will be enough just to get us through into the next session. But of course, this is just early days. The track is still, you know, speeding up as the grip and rubber gets laid down. Albon there in P5, but you can see it's, uh, you know, quite a close affair with Red Bull and Mercedes covered by a few thousand signs up there in the Haas. Surprising because Haas have really slipped down the pecking order. Maybe just others not getting the lap times in. McLaren and Ferrari still yet to show their full hand. So Q2, that will be the real crunch time now as we can maybe get some jeopardy of people falling out. A little bit of understeer creeping in in sector one, I must say, and that same stiff feeling that I had from Azerbaijan wasn't as prominent around Canada. I think that's just a circuit difference, though, and I alluded to that, that maybe, maybe it's just circuits like Monaco and Baku, street circuits, thorough, you know, proper street circuits where, you know, every, you know, the circuit's very bumpy, maybe the surface is a bit different, you know, generally it's going to be lower speed corners, maybe that's why I just felt horrendous, and we've got a few higher speed corners here around Montreal, uh, located in the, uh, in a park kind of uh, venues as such, so maybe the car feeling slightly better, and maybe next episode at Silverstone, a thoroughbred circuit, the car's going to feel absolutely fine. I don't know. I'm still very kind of puzzled a bit by the handling of this game. And I think everyone is uh, slightly. I think you'll admit in the comments below. But, uh, you know, that was a pretty good lap still, despite the kind of weird feelings in the car. And I felt confident enough to not even go out then for a second flyer. And thankfully, my confidence was, uh, well, backed up because we get through into Q3. P5 there ahead of Albon, who does make it through into, into, into Q3. But P9 only. So, you know, just about maybe you know, one-tenth away from being knocked out. Piastri doesn't make it through. Leclerc does. Both Mercs, both Red Bulls and McLaren through. So it's going to be a tight affair with those kind of usual named suspects that we've been seeing from the R&D chart. The uh, kind of real surprise there has been Pierre Gassi and Alpha Tauri because uh, you know, Alpha Tauri, well, his, his teammate Sonoda way down the order and you know, Alpha Tauri really on paper shouldn't be right up there but it's a great qualifying for, for the Frenchman to get through into the top 10 shootout. So now we bring on that final showdown and let's see what we can do. Right now, we've not really shown our hand as a team. We're not really showing anything. That says we are the best team on the grid. But neither did we in Baku. And obviously in the race, it was a different story. But it seems like qualifying, it's a bit more difficult to extract that lap time for me and Albon. And as you can clearly see there, by the way, the car kind of yoed about over the kerb. Not the best entry into Sector 2, leaving some time on the table. But it's still ultimately a pretty good lap time there. 109.9, uh, but only P7 as others go even quicker in this third part of qualifying. So we go again, getting 110 through the first few corners. But ultimately, this is the section where we're going to gain the most time. This time, not getting too much on the curb. And we don't get that weird kind of weight balance shift where my rear end was about to spin out. And so we gain about two, three tenths there. So we're now four tenths up on our first lap time. And that could be enough to get us through towards the sharp end. Depends on how others improve. We're now six tenths up. But into the final two corners, a little bit uh, overcautious, I would say, on the entry and exit. Exit and we lose a bit of time ultimately three and a half tenths gained but it's not going to be enough to get us onto the front row but will be enough for the second row the big question is though where is Albon because he was on provisional pole but now he's pushed down by the two silver arrows so myself and Albon on the second row it's a front row lockup though for the silver arrows Russell ahead of Hamilton big surprise there but you know Mercedes did upgrade going to this weekend in last season this uh, this this car Oh, did suit this circuit quite a lot as of course Hamilton uh, didn't he go on to win that race even around Montreal versus Verstappen so uh, yeah no real surprise there but uh, I would have thought Red Bull had been a bit higher but maybe in race pace terms they might come back through Leclerc ahead of both of them as there's a checkerboard of McLaren and Red Bull and then Gasly to round out the top 10 so we've uh, done a little bit better in qualifying compared to Baku we've got two cars ahead of us in the same team the Silver Arrows so could this be our team versus Mercedes for those top spot let's hope let's go to the grid and find out how sunday rolls hello and welcome to the Il notre dame once again for what promises to be another incredible canadian grand prix 
at a fiercely competitive circuit where pole position can often be decided by less than a tenth of a second. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles per hour here at the circuit Shield Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous wall of champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin at that final chicane. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Albert, the owner driver, Charles Leclerc, and Norris, Verstappen, Ricardo, Perez, and Pierre Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Carlos Sainz, and Drogovic, Sonoda, Vettel, Kevin Magnussen and Guan Yu Zhou. Latifi, Stroll, Mick Schumacher and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. A warm welcome to Natalie Pinkham, who is beside me in the commentary box today. Let's have a chat about McLaren. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. No grip penalty to talk about. It is still Russell on pole position. Hamilton directly ahead of me on the road. Al Bono alongside me on the second row. And some interesting tyre choices. A clear behind me on the hard tyres for Ferrari. The rest of us, or all of us, on the mediums. I think there's a few others maybe that have chosen the hards. But we're going for the medium to hard tyre strategy. Uh, now also with this, I think not with the 1.08, but 1.07 the patch. You now actually have to properly make sure you warm up the tyres. So definitely for those of you guys also playing my team at home, uh, be sure to be weaving around, trying to you know break as well and get some temperatures into the brakes and the tyres to ensure you have the best start because initially when the game launched, you technically didn't actually have to do that. But now you have to really make sure you try and weave around, do these burnouts as you get to the grid to try and warm up those tyres and give you the best chance of starting the race. And we're going to park up and get a very nice optimum. I was, I was a little worried there because it did come in quite hot into the grid box, but absolutely perfect parking and raring to go. I feel good about this. We just came off a 1-2. Our teammate won that race. I am itching to make it me this time. We're at one of my favorite circuits. We've qualified quite on the second row. We know the race pace has been getting better. Let's go to the Canadian Grand Prix. We go to five red lights here in Montreal. Five red lights are out and we are on the way to slow start for Albon and Hamilton as well. Can we jump both of them into turn one side by side with Lewis Hamilton? We're going to squeeze him to the right. He'll come back at us a little bit with the elbows out, but ultimately we have the racing line on the outside. We're up into second place. George Russell, though, perfect getaway for him from pole position to lead this race into the second sector. But we've got Hamilton. He's third place. Albon now in P4 ahead of Leclerc. And the two McLarens are side by side. Ricardo trying to get Lando Norris as Verstappen and Perez watch on behind the Red Bulls. They'll be hoping they have better race pace to try and jump up the order. It was definitely a disappointing Saturday for them. And at the moment, it'll be Norris that stays ahead of Ricardo. Ricardo for now though as we've seen Ricardo definitely have the more momentum as an AI driver in that papaya outfit unlike in real life as we now go back to our POV looking to stick with Russell as much as we can to obviously be within one second for DRS meanwhile behind fighting between Piastri and Ocon in the Ferrari and Alpine respectively here Piastri been the the subject of a lot of uh, F1 news in real life with the silly season a move to McLaren potentially but here in this alternate F1 news Universe trying to settle in to the Scuderia. Overtakes Ocon with a very close move. And it's a lot of side-by-sides actually we're seeing from P11 downwards here. Some real great fighting. Guan Yu Zhou, big dive bomb on Sebastian.
Sebastian Vettel and Magnussen make some contact. It's two by two as we see Williams versus Haas. We've got uh, uh, Haas versus Williams. It's all kicking off there. Felipe Drogovic in, in the mid mixed of it as well. Our old teammate. But meanwhile, in the kind of top nine, you would say, it's kind of single file because all of us are concentrating so damn hard to try and keep up with each other. So whilst the second half of the grid is pandemonium, just fighting everywhere, the top half are all just pushing intently and really, you know, the, the, the tension is there and we're just waiting for the moves to maybe start flying in. And I'm hoping that I can be one of them and then we can try and overtake George Russell. And this is the real test, you know, of this new patch with the AI. Especially off that corner we just went through, the hairpin onto this back straight, getting that launch from a very slow hairpin to, in order to get side by side. Through this final corner though, uh, just as we brush the wall of champions, that's a bit of a less affected by the patch because that's quite a high medium speed corner as we can really chuck the car through. So finding some good pace through there, but the real litmus test will be out the slow corners. Can we keep up with Russell? And I think we are doing so. You know, we set the fast up the Grand Prix as the fighting still continues behind. Felipe Drogovic versus Gasly. Piastri gets overtaken by Sonoda behind. So the Ferrari's falling away as we continue to apply the pressure on the race leader, Russell. And he's on the curb a bit too much. He's slow midway through that left and right. And now we have a good chance to maybe make an overtake. DRS open. No ERS needed. We're going to make the pounce round the outside. Russell again takes too much curb on the inside and is really slowing down because of it. So we're now side by side into the hairpin fighting Russell for P1. We're on the outside. We've gone deep. Russell's still there and he's got the better exit. But then round the outside we find some grip ERS usage as well to try and push us ahead. It's now going to be a drag race down this straight. And this may have been a much bigger challenge to keep first place before the patch but we're able to keep ahead just about into the right hander and remain in first place but we've got a mirror full of Russell behind though Hamilton has got a mirror full of Albon and Albon squeezes through on the inside and he, oh my god Albon's made the dive on Russell as well I did not see that coming he's overtaken Hamilton and now he's having a go for second place out of nowhere last race is race winner Albon looking at to make it another one two for our team in this race can't quite do it but what what a dive bomb that was from Albon. You know, he had a tough time anyway just overtaking Hamilton because Hamilton gave him a real good squeeze on the left-hand side. And then he just thought, you know what, I've made one over there. Let's go for the other one. He just makes a kamikaze dive. We've seen him do it before, to be fair, to, to Alex. So, uh, yeah, fair play. And so getting real aggressive here. So I think, you know, to be honest, from that, I think it's going to be a question of when, not if, he'll get second place from Russell eventually. So that's going to be a really cool vibe to again be in a position to maybe just calm down and control the race from the 1-2 for our team. But we're now going back to the live racing action and he is indeed applying the pressure, keeping up with Russell behind the two McLarens, pressurising Leclerc and Verstappen maybe feeling a bit of pressure from Perez and stuck in the traffic here a bit as we have a very lovely on board of uh, Hamilton there and we see Perez making a dive down the inside of Verstappen. The championship leader, remember, because of how poor Hamilton's race went at Baku and in Miami as well. Verstappen's got quite a commanding lead in the championship, but this is going to be a massive aid for Hamilton if Verstappen is feeling the pressure from Perez, and he has, because he's locked up and he's gone off circuit. He's nearly almost T-boned with the Alpine, and he's down to P9, and for sure, he's going to have some floor damage now, as he's bound the pressure from Ocon here. So look at the dive from Perez, as we watch a replay now, into the hairpin. So Checo, with all the confidence in the world there, kind of caught Verstappen napping a little bit and so our championship leader feeling the pressure from his teammate and he's all over the back of him right and left DRS open for both of them and then I assume it, it looked like a lock up then from Verstappen into this right hand oh really bad lock up on the front right and he just goes over the curb that for sure has broken his floor a little bit I can say because uh, it's such a massive uh, sleeping policeman on the inside there so Verstappen down to P9 that 
that is great news for Lewis Hamilton in his championship fight versus his old rival from 2021. Meanwhile, lap five now back to the live action. Lando Norris trying to overtake Leclerc, and Leclerc's really struggling on those hard tyres. Just like in real life, Ferrari have got it wrong by putting Leclerc on the hards. This time at the start of a Grand Prix, it's three wide. Ricardo trying to make a double overtake on his teammate, and Leclerc doesn't quite do it, but on the exit, he will get Norris, I think, and will get up into P5. Let's see. It's going to be a drag race now between the two teammates. Can Ricardo maintain the P5? Yes, he can. Great move for him, and he's up two positions there, and look at Leclerc. He's down to P8. He's been overtaken by Perez, and Perez going for a move on Norris there, so that's, and that's actually more of a shame for Verstappen, because Perez is showing the Red Bull has a bit more pace in the tank, and clearly Verstappen's a bit slower than Perez now because of the damage he's got from going uh, so far off. So we've got a few losers in this race of Verstappen and Leclerc, a few winners of Ricardo and Perez, and obviously a massive one of myself being in the lead right now by just uh, under or just about a second here. Russell keeping me honest and keeping within that DRS range, but I'm hoping this man, Albon, who is in, uh, much closer to Russell, can maybe make that move to get second place because then that's a little bit less pressure, you know? I definitely feel more pressure from a different car versus my teammate even though I know Albon's gonna be you know quite highly focused quite you know concentrated especially off that win we know how momentum works for the AI on this game and from the last game so he's gonna be very very good if he gets into second place but it's a bit better to have our teammate fighting us first than rather than Russell because we're controlling a one two from that point and on lap seven this may just be the moment Russell slow off that left hander into the hairpin Albon the long way round Russell will try and squeeze him to the wall but Albon gets the elbows out and he's still there on the exit side by side and Albon now has just got ahead by a nose it's now DRS open for the tie brick driver up into second place the Mercedes is completely defenseless now as he gets through and is able just to take the next corner easily put meanwhile Verstappen overtakes Leclerc down in the order so that, that Ferrari strategy of hard ties is just not worked out at all there as Verstappen with probably damage gets Leclerc and now the Alpine gets Leclerc so you know, uh, real, you know we, we've already had quite a lot of divergences from real life in this career mode so far. But one thing is remaining the same as real life. Ferrari strategies, Leclerc and Piastri both falling down the order from the start of this one, having qualified quite well in Leclerc's case. But uh, yeah, it's a 1-2 right now then for the team. It's the same as Baku again at the start of the race. But this time, we're the ones leading the way ahead of our teammate. But he's got the bit between his teeth. He's pulled a second on Russell and is applying the pressure to me in the hairpin. And we're feeling it a bit as we lock up into that right-hander. And Albon fully alongside us in the exit. We're able to get back ahead. But he's kind of just announcing himself and kind of maybe just putting some feelers out here. Not really going for the move fully there, I would say, but he's got DRS and he'll be able to save annoyingly. ERS battery, remember, just being within one second. Again, not that great through the chicane, but Albon actually has a moment of his own as he nearly goes into the Wall of Champions. Has to slow down a bit, but uh, this is not good for us. You can see I'm making a few mistakes. A lock up there into turn one, nearly a bit too wide and deep into that left-hander. So the Pressure is getting to me a little bit. You know, remember, we haven't won a race yet on F122. And so the palms are sweating a little bit. I want this so badly, but we know how good Albon has been so far this season. You remember that insane move he made on the last lap at Baku. We know what he can do in our car. And he's just there constantly now ever since he got the second place within half a second let alone a second and he's getting some brilliant exits off these corners I think my tyre wear a little bit worse than his potentially as he and I have a go on the outside Mick Schumacher out of this Grand Prix into the hairpin Albon has a little half look on the outside but really more so than anything he kind of almost set the move up because he's tightened my uh, line into the hairpin and got a better exit and with DRS aided we might be a bit of a sitting duck we don't have too much ERS to use, and I want to save it for the pit straight. Albon with the big lunge on the outside over the curb. We're side by side through the last chicane. It's now a drag race. We're using every bit of ERS.
less we've got left. We're down to single digits as we're wheel to wheel. And oh my god, Albon nearly fully takes us off circuit as he really, really wants to stamp down a marker and establish himself in that first place there. That was a bit frustrating. That was annoying because that really was quite aggressive from Albon. I had nothing to come back at him with because if I, if I committed to that left-hander, we would have just basically made contact and we would have crashed. So we have to go again. But like I said, my tyres are clearly suffering a bit more than his. I'm getting a few rear-end snaps. I've not got as much ERS as I would have liked to play around with. Meanwhile, Hamilton, who made a mistake earlier, is now trying to re overtake Ricardo. Russell pulling away in third place. So now Hamilton is having to deal with two very quick McLaren cars and Perez. And you know what? Verstappen has also arrived on the scene. But Perez making a double overtake on the McLarens. Trying to even cheekily make a dive bomb on the inside of Lewis Hamilton. It is all kicking off behind us for the fight from P4 down to P8. It looks like we might have an issue. Hang in there. We're attempting to manage it. Meanwhile, back to our POV as my engineer says there may be an issue. I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about Albon and this race win. We're using all the ERS. We're down to single digits, but we've now actually gained a bit of time back on him, and I'm gaining a bit of confidence after a shaky lap or two there with the rear end stepping out. I want to now get my head down and chase after him. I think we can still get the lead back from him and get this race win, but the engine's going to have different ideas. No! The engine has failed us from second place in this race. Fighting our teammate for the win. We were leading for so many laps at the start of this one. But our engine has given up. Our car is going up in smokes. And in a race where I really thought, I really, really thought we could have won our first ever race on F122 My Team Career Mode. It's going to end up with a retirement. DNF. Nil point, zero points. Formula One is a very, very cruel sport. It's not a fantasy a lot of the time, and it doesn't go your way a lot of the time. And this is one of those cases. Oh, I really, we had everything. We had the best car in the race. We had confidence. We had the pace. And the engine's given up at the wrong time. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. What a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today. It's a really bittersweet ending to the episode because I'm happy. I'm happy our teams won because Albon, quite amazingly, what a turn of events this is in the last two episodes, wins back-to-back -back wins in Formula 1. He only just got his first win last episode around Baku and he's now won a second race in a row. What a man, Al Bono on the top step again. But I, re I really feel like we could have had him today. I feel like we could have been there and he would have had to have settled for second place. But our team still get the win. It, it, it's, it's good. It's a good day for the team still, for, I guess, for, for that kind of sense. But obviously, it's still uh, very disheartening to have an engine failure on the other car and for us not to even be anywhere near the podium with zero points. And we're going to lose a lot of ground to Albon in the standings. A lot of ground to, to the car, to cars around us. We're down to P5 now as... Uh, uh, look at that though, Hamilton now back in it with Verstappen. Only three points separates Verstappen and Hamilton following a very poor race for the Dutchman and the championship leader. And Hamilton is back in this then. And that fight continues on as we enter the second half of the season, remember, as we go into the next episode, because this is round number eight of 16 of the sixth and race calendar. So it's all to play for on this second half. Verstappen versus Hamilton. And then a bit further back, it's uh, Albon, Russell and ourselves, I guess. Ricardo as well. You can kind of include in that in a bit of a fight for maybe P3. But who knows? Who knows what could happen? Albon, though. Two wins in a row. What momentum? Is this the start of some scary, scary AI coding and momentum for Albon? I don't want to say it, but we've seen it before sometimes that when AIs start winning, sometimes it's very hard 
Very hard to stop them performing very, very well. Is this is this the start of our teammate in Season 2 here being a very tough cookie to even beat? Not even for a win, just beating in general for any position in the races. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. But guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. A bittersweet race at Canada, but that is how the cookie crumbles sometimes in this sport. If you are new around here, then do subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.